Hey everyone, so in the previous video we were covering the base layer customization. In this video we're going to be going through the shape layer customization. So as always, within the sample report you already have your predefined variations of the charts and we're also going to be using these variations to showcase you the capabilities of the shape layers. So first things first, I'm going to select the map visual so that I can go into the formatting options. Let's open that up and let's see the shape layers. So one thing that you can notice right here when I'm hovering is you have up to 10 different shape layers actually available for you to be displayed on the visual. What this allows you to do is to create a dynamic drill down experience. So basically when you zoom in into the map, you can transition from one shape layer into a smaller one. In this example, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through the countries across the world. We're going to be zooming in into the US and we're going to transition the layer from actual country into the state. So what you can see here, I have set up two layers. One of them is using built-in shapes and actually the other one is also using built-in shapes. But in this one, I'm using the world shapes. So this allows me to define the boundaries for each country in the world. What I'm also going to adjust here is going to be the max zoom level. I'm going to say that I want this level where this particular layer to be disabled after I reach third level of the zoom in. Now we're going to close this and we're going to open up the second layer, which is going to be shapes, but using US states. And for this one, I'm going to go with the reverse behavior. I want to say that starting from level three, display this, but afterwards, you know, kind of keep going through it and don't eliminate that particular layout until you get to the final level, which is the max zoom. So in this case, you actually already see both of them at a given time. That is because at this particular moment, I'm on the third level of the zoom. If I zoom out one level outwards, you can see that now I have the country shapes. But if I zoom in one level closer, I have both of them. And if I go into the next level, I actually have just the shapes for the states. So this is the sort of behavior that you can create when laying multiple layers on top of each other. To further customize them, you can of course also define the sequence and this is going to be really important for those cases where you have multiple layers or active or visible at the same time. So for example, like we had right here, right? When you have both of them, you need to define the sequence so you can define which layer is going to be selected when you click on it. Now, additional settings, of course, are regarding the colors. So you can adjust the fill color and you can also adjust the outline color. And the last thing that you can do for all shapes is you can also enable conditional formatting. Once you enable it, make sure that you actually have also a value provided in the fields because otherwise the conditional formatting doesn't have anything to reference. So once you know these capabilities, we can actually move on to the other type of shapes that we support. And here I'm going to go transition into the KML. So as you can see, in this situation, we actually have multiple items being displayed at the same time. We have some areas being displayed, we have some images being displayed, and if I right click on any of them, I actually have some additional information. This is because that information is being provided through the KML file from the link that you have in the formatting options. So if I click on a visual, let's again go into the formatting options, right here, shape layer one, you can see instead of using the built-in, which was previously, I'm using KML. And for this one, you need to provide the KML URL, so where the file is being hosted, and you also need to provide a style URL. So one thing to remember when providing these links is that these links or the place of the origin needs to have course headers enabled. Without these, the visual is not going to be able to load in the layer, and you're not going to be seeing anything on top of the map. Now, the additional settings are going to be show images, for example, because if I disable it, you can see that all these nice images that I had there are going to be completely eliminated. So this is something you define on the KML level, but you can further customize it through the formatting options. Afterwards, like I said, you also have your conditional formatting. And then another thing that you can do here is by providing the KML style URL, you essentially define the colors, outlines, and so forth for these shapes that you, for example, see right here. But if you want to manually override them, you can also right here click on, for example, let's say style override one, and you can find which particular shape you're referencing here, and you can change the colors, outline, opacities, and so forth. 
So not only you can define everything just by using particular KML files, but you can also further customize this by going through the formatting options. The third option that we have available for the shape layer is going to be a GeoJSON. Now for the GeoJSON, you can see the sample is relatively simple. What I essentially have here is if I click on the visual, let's go quickly also to the formatting options, shape layer one, there we go. You can see that I'm using a GeoJSON property and I'm also providing a URL. The same thing applies also for GeoJSON files. Remember to have your course headers enabled. Now, when it comes to the GeoJSON file, you have similar customization settings to the actual original built-in shapes. You can customize them sequence, min-max zoom levels, fill colors, and outline color opacities. And of course, it also supports the conditional formatting. So having all these three types available for you allows you to essentially create a really immersive map within the Power BI, because you can combine things like built-in shapes, GeoJSON files, and KML files at the same time. All right, but that's going to be it for the shape layers, and I'll see you in the next video.